talking about people caring over the weekend um a group of anarchists and rebels decided to descend all across london and parts of bristol um basically protesting the lockdowns and just saying you've had enough and it's funny because if for the most part according to our roadmap we're due to come out of you know our most strenuous levels by what april 12th right so in a few weeks we're due to come out of um the levels that are not allowing us to go to our you know non-essential shops and salons and gyms which is basically a sign of normality so for people to be processing now is a bit mute but maybe just go to show people's frustration levels have just reached boiling point and people have had enough especially look at the numbers i think was it the other day we had like 17 deaths or something right so vaccination is obviously working really well people within a vulnerable group i think up to half have been vaccinated already so people are sitting there at home thinking hold on if everyone if half the people that have at risk have been vaccinated and cases are dropping so are deaths why are we all locked inside our homes it doesn't make any sense and i think a lot of these people are still the ones that are like protesting early and flipping august right which was insane but i think now that we've got some perspective and we've got some time and we can kind of all sit back and stroke our chins we have to agree especially when we've seen the great examples of new zealand australia parts of southeast asia like vietnam and stuff lockdowns in general don't work especially in places like europe it just doesn't work in for a long-term strategy you can't do it during times you can do it of course if you live in those sort of other countries like australia and new zealand where you can maybe control your borders a bit more um you can you know put into things you can put things into place maybe law wise that other countries probably can't in terms of taking away people's quote-unquote civil liberties and all that sort of malarkey temporarily you'd hope but you just can't do that in Europe. You can't do that in the Western Hemisphere. It's just impossible to do. People, number one, are not going to comply. And number two, is a long-term strategy. It's just, in, it's just in, in, ineffective. It really is ineffective. And it's basically been proved. Because no matter how we look at the numbers and how, how we look at the, uh, the, the approach, we can blame Boris for a lot of the stuff that obviously went down in terms of not basically acting on the evidence that he was given. But overall... We are where we are because we just can't handle staying indoors for too long. People decide to throw raves, travel places, go on holiday. People are going on holiday in like July, August, right? We just can't do it. So I think we're in a position by our own, you know, desire to go outdoors and live a regular normal life that every human being should kind of be permitted to live. And you just can't stop people from doing that you can't stop people from having that need to socialize and hang out and i think i saw a lot i kind of the penny drop for me with all the illegal raves i kept thinking to myself why is all these why is it constantly these illegal raves keep happening when everyone knows the severity of the punishment is super high especially during covid right no one wants to get fined let alone during a time when you probably don't have that much disposable income you may be out of work um you're on furlough whatever it is your future is uncertain you don't want to be you know spending and paying 200 quid to go to a dusty rave somewhere for half an hour because it got shut down by the police but it felt like people's desire to go there was magnetic they just needed to be around other people right sort of like a moth to a flame it just couldn't help it and that's just human nature we can't fight it it's just part of us and I guess this is just what we're seeing now with these lockdown protests in London and parts in Bristol and all over the world. People are just having enough and they're saying, look, we just want our freedoms back. We just want to be able to go outdoors. And I think maybe as well, we basically as a society, maybe people in government, they basically overestimate everyone's desire to like keep others safe and happy and healthy and, you know, make sure someone's granny doesn't die. For the most part, people don't care. Right. They want, you know, they're sort of basically looking after themselves and people around them. And they'd much rather live, they'd much rather live, you know, 37 years of quasi freedom as opposed to, you know, essentially eradicating a year of their lives from just staying indoors. That's kind of the bargain. I think a lot of people have been able, are willing to sort of give up. And you're seeing that in America, right? People in America know the risks. They know that it's real. There are some, you know, there's a fringe minority of people that think COVID doesn't exist. But for the most part, everyone exists. Everyone knows it's a real thing, but they're willing to take the risk. And if they are willing to take the risk, I think it's up to the government to basically comply with their desires and just open things up because this whole staying indoors thing for a prolonged period of time, especially with the vaccine, just it's, it blows my mind, really. It does blow my mind. But hey, we'll continue on. This article from the BBC said COVID arrest during anti-lockdown protests in London 
So thousands of people have attended Andy demonstrations in London after MPs urged the government to allow peaceful protests during lockdown. Crowds marched from Hyde Park to Westminster with at least 33 arrests by police, mostly for COVID breaches. Scotland Yard said the number of people attending Saturday's demonstration existed, exceeded expectations. The Home Office said it was still illegal for people to attend protests under the current coronavirus rules. Deputy Assistant Commissioner Lawrence Taylor told the BBC more people than previously expected um, were at the Sunday the Saturday protest, but the Met has not given a formal estimate of the number in attendance. BBC correspondent Marina Spring, reporting for the anti lockdown protest, said the atmosphere was animated and a number of people appeared to be angry about restrictions on peaceful protests. Later in Hyde Park, police were forced um, to run back to their vans as protesters threw bottles and cans at them. PA Media reported that the home members, was that? that, that some members of the public then left the park with small children carried by their parents. The funny thing is, there was a de there was a demonst there was a remarkably less sort of like police altercations with public members of the public than there was at the vigil that occurred with a young lady that died recently allegedly at the hands of the police officer. So in terms of optics, this is horrendous, right, for the police department to be in a position where they're sort of essentially dragging and pulling women across from a vigil, pinning them down to the floor, handcuffing them when you know when scores of protesters are going out to protest the lockdowns are basically being faced off with masks and stormtrooper outfits, but no real violence for the most part. Um, so it definitely goes to show this. There's a girl here with a sign that says freedom over fear. Another one that says lockdown is depression, loneliness, homelessness, bankruptcy, uh, done domestic abuse, suicide. For sure, I agree with that one. Loads of scores of people again out there protesting and marching. And the funny thing is, for sure, in July, they would have been described as COVID idiots. But now a huge source of the regular population, because again, there are, I'm sure there are loads of those sort of like, you know, anti-establishment anarchist types are there. But looking at that picture here, it looks like some regular schmegular people, right? Just everyday Londoners deciding, hey, I need to have my voice heard. So things have definitely changed the atmosphere, the climate, um, the feeling around people has definitely changed in that regards. And you can see again. There's a video here from, where is this account called Reputly, showing an image of people protesting and marching in central London. It was funny too because most of the reporting said there was hundreds there was hundreds when they quite clearly there's more than hundreds there there's people marching on very busy streets in london and just you know it's just wall to wall of people you can't see any cars at all that's at least a foul that's at least ten thousand plus of people just you know marching all the way down around the streets having enough plus you have to imagine a lot of people i think now the rules have changed so you can meet at least one person outside of your household so there's a lot of people that are probably out anyway that's like you know what just let's just jump on this and get involved too Yeah. God forbid something else happens like this, like another, you know, virus of this nature. People are not going to accept lockdowns again. They just won't. Uh, you know, you don't want it to happen again in our lifetime. Don't get me wrong. But if it doesn't care again, it's just not going to run. People are just not going to have it. I think we've learned our lesson with this one. I think people again. I think those images. You know, those early images from Italy and places and parts of China with dead bodies getting thrown in the back of flipping ice. You know cold trucks or whatever they call ice trucks whatever they are refrigerated trucks they put meat and shit inside in um remember those, those images of people being you know basically uh taped inside their homes locked in putting all you know has a tape all over where they can't leave scores of african immigrants being chucked out of their homes because you know for some reason people in china thought the virus was coming from parts of africa like loads of crazy shit was happening right we saw images so it, i don't really begrudge parts of you know people in government deciding and getting scared and worried that they're gonna have the blood of you know uh, you know potentially millions of their citizens on their hands but now that we've seen how it affects people you know 
um, who it affects the age demographic, um, what you lose from putting people on lockdown. We just have to agree long term. It's just not a strategy that we can do in Western Hemisphere. It, we, of course, have seen the success stories in Australia, New Zealand, Vietnam and South Korea. Parts of places that have done it well, but we just don't have what it takes societally to do that. We just don't. It's a shame, but it just is what it is. There we go, police marching around the street, all in Hyde Park, flares and shit. There's a lot of rough barnets in this clip, innit? Loads of hair, loads of beards, everyone's looking rough. Everyone looks, looks like they need a bit of a treatment, a little bit of a salon, a little bit of R&R. &R. Yeah, that's a lot of people, man. That's more than that's more than hundreds. It's definitely thousands, for sure. Crazy, man. So yeah, people have just had enough. You know, that's it. They just they've simply had enough, and they want to get back to living some semblance of normality. Now, of course, the great thing for us, we do have some light at the end of the tunnel but it still looks like it still feels like it's just taking too long in it when you consider the you know the cases going down and whatnot it just feels like it's taking a little bit too long but you know glad that we've got something coming down the pipeline because we could be in the worst position we could be you know we could be in parts of flipping um europe like germany right they're really suffering of stuff and we don't want to be in any way included in there so definitely thankful that that is happening boom, 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 boom.